Application Programming Interfaces, or APIs, are really common and extremely powerful tools that let you communicate with different devices and services. This includes our Groove product line and more cloud services than I could possibly list. In this video, I'll be using a weather API to bring data into Node-RED running on my Rio and do some basic control. My goal is to get the sunrise and sunset time for today, bring that into Node-RED running on this Rio, and use it to do some basic control. And that control will be to toggle an outside light, this will be simulated by this red stack light, to turn it on during the night, and then turn it off during the day to save power. Before I dive into doing that, you should have some basic familiarity with Node-RED, JSON objects, and if you're using a Groove device like I am, you should have your Groove I.O. nodes installed and properly configured. If you aren't familiar with any or all of that, we'll have links in the description below to help you get started. Now, before I go straight into creating the Node-RED flow, I'll need to understand where my data is coming from and what I need to do to actually get it. So we're not going to start with Node-RED, we're actually going to start with my API, which is openweathermap.org. When you go to this website, you'll first see some basic data for the current weather. You'll need to sign in to actually use the API. So just click sign in in the top right, and if you don't have an account, you can create one for free by just clicking create an account and confirm your email with them. I already have an account, so I'll log right in. Once you're logged in, you land on this homepage. You can see that you have access to API keys, billing plans, and so on. For today, we just want to focus on this API. There's a lot of options here, but today we just need the current sunset and sunrise time for today, so we'll just get the current weather data and view their API doc. Here you can see there's a lot of different options for how you can get your data, how it can be formatted, but today we just want basic JSON data for the current city that I'm in. So we'll be using this current weather data for one location by city name, and we have the API call URL right here. You'll note that it lists what parameters we can set, where only two of them are required, the city name and the app ID. To fill those in, I'm just going to copy this API call to my clipboard by just selecting this icon over on the right, and I'm going to open Notepad so that I can easily edit it and maybe even save it to work with later. Here we can see I have my two required fields, Q equals the city name and my app ID equals API key. So let's replace those, including the brackets. You want to make sure that you have Q equals just your city name. You don't want any uh, curly brackets on either side of that. I'm going to be using Temecula since that's where I'm at in the Opto headquarters in California. Here I'll need to also get an API key. That's so that the API can identify which users are requesting what data, and that's not just to verify you have an account, it's to make sure that you're not hitting the API too often. You can find out more about that in the billing information page that you saw on the homepage earlier. So let's get that API key. You can see that under App ID, it does have a link right here uh, under the API key tab, and you can also reach it by clicking on the drop down for your username right here in the top right and selecting My API Keys. I'll open that in a new tab, and we'll see here I've already created a new API key called Alternate and, a, and the original one, which was called Default. You can create as many keys as you want, but keep in mind that your uses are spread across your entire account, not your individual keys. So be a little bit careful about where you hand these out. If one does happen to get loose in the wild and lots of people end up using it, if it gets publicly published on the internet, you can click this X over on the top right and completely erase that key. Anyone that was using it will have to replace it with a valid key. I'm going to be deleting these keys after this video, so make sure you create your own. I'll start by double-clicking this key and copying it to my clipboard, and we'll paste that into our notepad. I'll just, again, replace both the brackets and the API key in between, and paste that string in. Here, I have exactly what I need to get my weather data. Let's start by just viewing that in the browser to make sure that it's actually working as expected. I'll copy this whole URL to my uh, clipboard, and because it's just a HTTP address or HTTPS address, I can view it in my browser. I don't need any special software to see this. I'll paste it in and hit go, and you can see it's nicely formatted in JSON for me. The reason it's in JSON is because I have a pretty print extension in my browser. What you're more likely to see is just this source data, this raw data, because the server is just responding with a string. But because it's JSON and it's well formatted, it's really easy to just break it down, parse it out, and get the information we need. You can see that I have temperatures in Kelvin, that's the default format, and we have the wind speed, which is actually in kilometers per hour, but it's not windy today. Finally, at the bottom here, we have some sys information, and that includes our sunrise and sunset. This is what we're going to be focusing on today, and that's what we want to pull into Node-RED. So 
we know that my city is working, my API key is working, I can confirm the city with the latitude and longitude, and the weather conditions do match, so the API key and the city are all set and we have our data. Now let's bring it into Node-RED. I'll come back to my flow and create a basic just flow to bring in the data so I can view it in the debug pane to make sure it's working here as well. I'll start with an inject node, and then to actually do the HTTP request and talk with the API, I'm going to be using an HTTP request node. To configure this, just double click it. The default method is set to get, and I am getting the weather data, but other APIs will use, for example, you can control your Groove devices with put commands to actually write digital inputs and outputs, but the default of get is what we need here. I'll paste in my URL, which is just going to be a static string, although I could dynamically configure it if I wanted, and I don't need to worry about my payload or security because I am validating myself with this API key right here. Finally, I do want to make sure I parse that JSON object before it actually shows up in my debug pane. I don't want that raw string, I want a parsed JSON object, so I'm going to make sure I change that return object. I'll go ahead and click done, and now I want to actually view the data. Let's do that with a debug node. But I don't want to just see message.payload, I don't just want to see the response to the request, I want to see the entire message object. So just double click it, select the message drop down, and choose complete message object. And you'll see why this is important in a second. I'll click done, and now we can wire everything together. I'll manually inject the timestamp on payload, do the HTTP request, and view the MI debug pane. Let's go ahead and deploy, run this flow, and we'll see the weather data right here. If I drop that down, you can see I do have my payload here, which is now this object that you saw in my browser a moment ago, and I have some other information that got produced by the HTTP request node, including this status code with the status 200, meaning that the request was successful. You can see here under sys, I do have my sunrise and sunset, and because the debug node can recognize this sunrise time, I can click it, and it'll convert it into a nice readable timestamp for me. I can confirm that is when the sun came up today pretty nifty feature of the debug pane there. But one thing you will notice is that over here on the left, I'm injecting message.payload with my timestamp, and I will need to compare that current timestamp with my sunrise and sunset, but unfortunately it doesn't survive through the HTTP request node because the payload gets overwritten with this HTTP response. So we'll need to move the timestamp onto a different property so that it's not overwritten. That's pretty easy to do, we'll just move it into message.timestamp. I also don't use the topic since it just comes back as an empty string, so if I wanted I could delete that. Now I'll click done, and deploy since I did make a change here, and inject one more time. Now you can see my timestamp does survive, and I do still have my payload object with my sys, and that has my sunrise and sunset time. One important thing to keep track of though when you're working with various APIs is not every system uses the same units or the same accuracy. For example, you'll see the sunrise and sunset from the Open Weather Map API have 10 digits. That's because they're providing the current timestamp in seconds. That's the level of accuracy they provide. However, up here the timestamp that node red is injecting is in milliseconds. There's 13 digits here. So this, this integer value, even though it still is a valid timestamp, you can see that it has the milliseconds over there on the right, whereas this timestamp here from the Open Weather Map API just has dot zero zero zero. Those last three digits aren't used. So instead of being able to actually compare the time, this value is always going to be bigger, and we're going to need to fix that before we can do a comparison. Thankfully, that's really easy with Node Red. I'm just going to drop in a change node to change the message dot timestamp. I can drag it right onto the wire here. You can see it goes dashed, and it will wire itself in. Now, what I want to be changing here is I want to set message.timestamp to be a new value. I'm modifying or changing the timestamp value. So I'm going to take the message.timestamp and I'm going to be setting it to a simple expression. What is that expression? Well, it's just going to be message.timestamp divided by 1000. I'll do this really quickly to show you what it looks like and then we'll come back and make another quick change. I'll click done, deploy the flow, and we can inject one more time. Now you can see I have this integer value or this floating point value, this uh, double value right here. And if I open my payload and my sys again, we can see that yes, I have 10 digits to the left of the decimal place and 10 digits in total here. The one kind of downside to just doing simple division is I do still have these decimal places. And now the node red debug pane just thinks this is a number. If I click it, it doesn't actually recognize it as a timestamp. 
This is fine for our application, but I want to show you a cool trick really quickly. Because this expression uses what's called jsonata, you can actually use simple functions like rounding. So I can round the result of this back into an integer by just using dollar sign round and then parentheses around my value. Now when I click done and deploy, when I inject, you'll see that the timestamp successfully survives as a 10 digit number with no decimal places, and I can actually click it and view the human readable time. Just a nice little tip and a good feature of the change node. Now that I do have my current timestamp and my sunrise and sunset all using the same units of seconds, we can actually start to do our comparison and that'll lead into our control. Make sure you just do a quick little test in the debug pane before you actually deploy your code because you never know when you're going to get mix match values or units, so it's an easy way to check. Now we need to actually determine whether or not it's daytime or nighttime, and that is going to be how we actually control this, this stack light that you see over here, this outside light. To do that decision, I am going to be using a switch node. This will just route the message in different directions, and that's exactly what I want. One for when it's daytime, and one for when it's nighttime. There's a lot of different comparisons I have here, but I need to make sure that I'm comparing the current timestamp to my two other message values here, the sunrise and sunset. There's lots of different options here, but the main one that I want to use is in between. Because if it's in between sunrise and sunset, it must be daytime, and if it's not in between those two, then it must be nighttime. It's a pretty straightforward uh, way to check it. So I want to click in between, and then select this drop down to make sure I'm checking the message object property. So I'll select message dot, and I want to get the message dot payload dot sys dot sunrise. To get that path really easily, I'll just use this third icon from the left to copy path. Copy that to my clipboard and paste it in here. Message dot payload dot sunrise dot sys dot sunrise. Now we'll check the other message property. I'll paste in that same string since I just need to set it to sunset. So I have my sunrise and sunset, and if the timestamp property is in between those values, I'll get a message outside of output one for the daytime. For the nighttime, I'll add another property so that if it's not in those two values, in between those two values, or otherwise, I want to go outside of output 2, and I don't need to set any properties for those since it's just a catch-all for everything else. To make this easy to keep track of, just click the Appearance tab up in the top right here and name your outputs. Output 1 is for the daytime, and output 2 is for night. Now when I click Done, you can see that my switch node is got day or night. We can even give this a name to make it a little bit easier to keep track. Now I'm in, able to inject, get the current weather data for today at my current location, make sure the timestamp is correctly formatted, and check to see if it's daytime or nighttime. Now I'm ready to actually toggle the stack light. To do that, I'm going to be using the Groove IO nodes since I am communicating from this Groove Rio. If you're using some other system to toggle your outside light or you're doing something else, you may use different nodes, so this is going to depend on your application. In my case, I am going to be using the Groove IO write nodes. If you don't already have these installed, we have a video covering how to install them and how to configure them, and we'll have that linked in the description below. You can see I have this red triangle here now because I haven't actually fully configured the node yet. So to do that, I'll just double click it, select the device dropdown, and choose the localhost configuration I've already set up. This is just a digital output and on-off light, so that's good to go, the default digital output channel state there. I just need to find my module index and my channel index, determine my value, and name the node. To find these, I'll just come open to my Groove Manage homepage and select I.O. channels. Here you can see I have a couple of sensors already set up. You can see those coming out of the wiring of the Rio here. But the one I want to focus on is this digital output number two here, the red stack light. Currently it's turned off, but you can see that I can just toggle that on we'll see the light come on and toggle it off and it'll go off. Currently it's daytime, so the light should be off. So now that it's on, when I run my flow, it should automatically turn it off for me. So let's leave that on for now. This is on app module zero because the Groove Rio is always module zero. There's only one module and that index is zero and you can see that in the URL up in the top here. And it's on channel two, we can see that here as well. So on my module index of zero, and my channel index of two, we want to determine what our value is going to be. Rather than just writing the message.payload, since our payload is this whole weather object here, we're going to pick a fixed value, and that's going to be true or false depending on what this node does. Because this is going to be for the daytime, we want to turn the light off here. That means we just send a value of false. It's that simple. We'll click done, and you can see that we have to turn the light off, and we'll wire that into the day output of this switch node.
I can simply make a copy of that by clicking the node, pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V, and we'll wire this one in to be turn on the light when it's nighttime. So we'll just switch this same index uh, 0 and uh, index 2 channel index, and we'll turn the light on with a value of true. I'll go ahead and click done, and we've done everything we need to. Here we'll have an inject, and we can change this to be an interval because I don't want to have to manually check whether it's sunrise or sunset constantly, and I'm going to choose an interval of just 15 seconds for this demo. Of course, this is overkill in a real-life application. I don't need to be hitting the API every 15 seconds. That's a waste of their services, a waste of my computational power, and it could burn out my API key, which tracks how often I'm using the API. So you may realistically want to check every 15 minutes. That way, within 15 minutes of the sun rising, the light would turn off, and within 15 minutes of the sun setting, it would turn back on again. For now, for this demo, 15 seconds is going to work for us. Now it will automatically inject every 15 seconds, make the request, fix the timestamp units, do a quick little logic check to see if the current timestamp is between the sunrise and sunset times, and then toggle the light accordingly. I'll clear up my debug plane, click deploy, and I'll take my hands away from the keyboard to see this working. Within 15 seconds, this light is going to turn off because it is currently daytime, that timestamp falls in between those two values, and we'll see that happen when we see the request come through here in a moment. This is just a really simple example of control. We just saw the light go off. Really simple example of how you can use an API to do control. This is going to work consistently 24 seven and we'll always just turn the light off whenever it is currently in the day. This is a really great way to get data that you might not otherwise have. I can't tell whether it's daytime or nighttime just from sitting here with my Rio. I could estimate it and set a fixed time, for example, turning it on at 7 a.m. and turning it off at 6 p.m. or something like that, but daylight savings times would throw that off and all sorts of things. Having this live data is extremely valuable, and you can get a lot more than just sunrise and sunset. You saw how much rich data was in this object, and this is just one weather API to give you an example of how to use the weather API, but also an example of the power of APIs. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the below the video or come to our forums at forums.opto22.com. Thanks for watching.